this hospital here in Toronto, which is quite good, Western Hospital, uh, for congestive heart failure, which is my second bout uh, with it. I had it last year, and uh, and what happened was I, when I went to India to uh, shoot uh, this film, Pig City, uh, in Varanasi, the city of the dead, the city of the burning, I uh, contracted some kind of flu, cold, virus, whatever, uh, which stayed in my system a long time and uh, <clears throat> turned into an infection and uh, must have gotten back into my heart. So then I started, uh, uh, so I started going back into congestive heart failure. But I'm dealing with it now. Uh, the infection is under control. But I was about to go into kidney failure, which is not a joke. And uh, and I'm I'm starting to do better. It's gonna you know it's gonna take a while. My heart works at my heart is about 19 percent. So I want to get 19 percent of a heart. Uh, and uh, and I've been using uh, and trying all kinds of besides the standard allopathic approach. Standard allopathic approach will give you about nine years of life. Uh, and most people, a lot, 90% uh, of the people with congestive heart failure die within the first year. And, uh, and uh, you can make it to about five years, about nine years. A heart transplant, uh, which was recommended when I was in Italy, uh, will give you about nine years. Uh, so it's one of, but this has become, as part of this selling sickness, part of the story that I'm trying to tell, my own life is, uh, is central uh, and my own aliveness is central to, uh, to uh, uh, what this is going to, what this is about, which is what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find methods of healing uh, which do exist. The problem is that most of our diseases today and most of our illnesses, as Dr. Gerson clearly pointed out in the 1930s in Germany, our cause is only two, two causes for it. One is improper nutrition and our foods have become so denatured, demineralized, devitaminized that if you were to eat a carrot today from 20 years ago, there can be as much as a thousand percent difference. That's how little nutritional value we are getting in our foods, particularly in North America, and particularly with GMOs and all that. And the other issue, which is, of course, is toxicity. The toxicity of our environment, the use of pesticides, of chemicals, of herbicides, and thousands and thousands of petrochem petrochemicals that are surround us, which the body cannot handle. We seem to accept this idea that we can go ahead and, and spray our crops and kill the insects with this insane notion that somehow or another it's not going to affect us. Of course it is. Any kind of poison to life is going to affect us. And so many chronic ailments today uh, are as a consequence, and yet because of the way the entire system is geared, controlled by petrochemical, the petrochemical corporations. We can't seem to be able to do anything about it. As I pointed out earlier on in the story, the reason I'm in this situation is because I was exposed to massive uh, amounts of chemicals in an abandoned factory. I was invited by the Governor General of Canada at the time to do an anniversary reading of a play I did called The Collector Works of Billy the Kid by Michael Ondaatje, who went on to do The English Patient, became very prominent. Uh, and many of the people on that show, like Des McEnough uh, and so forth, became quite famous. He directed Jersey Boys on Broadway, among many other shows. And uh, so we were invited to go back and do that reading, and I went back to that theater, 
uh, and I hadn't been there since 1971. And it was a palace, and I said to the artistic director, Martin Bragg, it's a palace, it was a dump when we were here. He was the one that told me, he said, when you guys were here, this place was a toxic dump. So what are you talking about? Under the stage, in the soil, barrels of PCPs, of dioxins, of mercury. It was a hidden, toxic depository. And Professor Van Wyck showed me photographs uh, from his book, Highway of the Atom, uh, satellite photos where you could actually see the barrels of stuff that were around uh, the space that then disappeared as they were buried underneath. And uh, so we were all exposed. We're all in our 20s. And like I said, almost uh, I know personally 38 that are dead. But there were, I know there was at least 200 that died. None of this has ever been brought out. None of this has ever uh, been discussed. None of this has ever come out to the, to, the, to the foreground. I want this to come out. The fact of the matter is uh, there must be at least 200. And then what, what finally happened, as I was told, is uh, four years after the initial group left, uh, the city of Toronto closed the place down for nine months and surreptitiously, day and night, removed the barrels of, of toxins and got them out there and removed several feet of topsoil and finally cleaned the place up. It's now known as Cannes Stage and it's uh, done some of Canada's finest plays. But that was the site. But the great majority came from Great Slave Lake. It was put on trains, shipped across the country. This is in a book by Professor Van Wyck called Highway of the Atom and shipped over to Port Hope, Ontario, where uh, secretly it was processed into radium uh, and then finally uh, bomb grade uranium-235, which was then used uh, in the very, very first uh, bomb of Zanus. And that same stuff was then used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And uh, there were secret sites here in Toronto where this was going on. Because what they had to do was once they were used, they could not be, they, they could be shut down. In other words, they, like, like that, this space, our space was, was shut down and given to us by the city of Toronto because then they would have to admit that something had been going on there. So the vast quantities, vast amounts of, in my opinion, of cancer rates, which increase almost exponentially as you move towards Lake Ontario, is due partially because of this. And Fukushima is, as uh, Dr. Suzuki pointed out, the greatest disaster of our era. And he's not the only scientist uh, to point that out. Uh, you can see from outer space the plumes of radioactive uh, water that has been pouring out, you know, is being used uh, on 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 the um, on the sites, going into the Pacific Ocean and traveling across. And you can see it from a via satellite all the way. It arrived the West Coast about three years ago. So we're surrounded. And uh, the question, and the whole point of this is, is like, what what are people going to do about it? How can this be stopped? Because if it isn't stopped, we won't need World War III uh, for extinction because uh, our lifespans are going to be severely cur curtailed and, uh, and uh, illness, uh, particularly in, in the rate of cancer, which is going to be exponential diabetes. Uh, Dr. Eldon Dahl, who we interview in the show later on, said it is an epidemic and it is a secret and silent epidemic of illness. And nobody is really doing anything about it, particularly government. So uh, one of the issues that we deal with in the story with the issue of Health Canada that has been uh, uh, trying to eliminate all the natural healing substances in the naturopathic industries of Canada uh, instead of doing the opposite. 
Now, one of the things it is doing or is attempting to do, which will destroy the naturopathic industry here in this country, is uh, the labeling of foods as drugs. What does that mean? It means that garlic, which has a positive impact on blood pressure or, or uh, uh, oregano, which is a natural antiviral, or fennel or fenugreek or any number of natural herbs will be declared drugs just like the drugs that I'm on uh, for the heart. Consequently, uh, you won't be able to get, have, have access to these absolutely natural healing products with absolutely no side effects. And the propaganda continues, uh, and that's the problem, the propaganda continues that somehow or another naturopathic medicine or Chinese medicine. Dr. McLaren was the only one, uh, doctor at that time. And you know, homeopathic medicine, which was used for thousands of years, even though it first uh, came to prominence recently in the 1850s, but it had been around for a long time. And uh, the aspirin companies in the 1920s, Bayer, uh, assaulted it full blown saying, oh, it's voodoo and managed to shut down and get shut down many of the, f the best homeopathic colleges in the world, which are here in Canada and uh, in North America. And, you know, put this stymied, put this curse uh, on these kinds of medications so that the average population actually thinks that uh, they are of no value and they're voodoo. They're not. And I'm an example of why they're not. My friends are dead. I'm alive, and I'm alive because I've been using alternative methods since my early 20s. And now that I'm in the situation I'm in, in my old age, and, and dying, I want the story to I want the story to come out before I die, before I croak. I want the truth of this to be told, and uh, and that uh, because it may save the lives of people in the future. We need to have a system in place and uh, we need to have genuine, genuine uh, guardsmen for our health. Health Canada is not doing that. Health Canada is working actively with Big Pharma uh, to sell drugs. That is not its purpose and its function. Its purpose and its function is to protect the health of the Canadian people. As, uh, the Toronto Star pointed out uh, recently, uh, in the last year or so, uh, they have taken uh, many, many drugs that are causing a tremendously negative impact. Um, they, the information and killing people, that information is not going to the Canadian people because it's, quote, proprietary. Proprietary in what sense? Yeah, yeah, ridiculous. I mean, uh, Toronto Star talked about 600 and something children given various ADD, ADHD drugs that uh, seven-year-old girls having heart attacks and 12-year-old boys committing suicide. All this information kept apart. The, later on in the show, we're going to be interviewing uh, uh, Terence Young, member of parliament, whose daughter Vanessa uh, was given basically a drug Presepidrol, or whatever it's called, they always have these stupid names for what uh, was just kind of indigestion, or so he thought. It, it killed her. She died for, as a consequence of this drug. It took, it took him a year to win his case against the Little Corporation and Health Canada. That drug had been taken off the market because it was killing people. The name was changed and re-released, and it killed his daughter. And uh, this is the kind of shenanigans we're talking about. And the reason why is because when it comes to Big Pharma, we are dealing with trillions, not billions, trillions of dollars. As some medical scientists have pointed out to me in the past, because I've been involved in this for a long time, you know, some of the biggest scams that we have going on now. Besides the, the issue of vaccination, which is a very, very moot point, but like the cholesterol drugs, the statin drugs, the blood pressure drugs, everybody's got blood pressure, everybody's got and so forth. Statin drugs are, you know, uh, in Germany, they're trying to eliminate or absolutely destroy the mind, destroy the memory. And uh, 
And I know, but I know it from both the inside and the outside. There is no serious, serious desire to bring health. It's ironic that you know you're talking about Obamacare or Trump Care or all that. It's all nonsense if it doesn't uh, actually heal people. Hospitals, unfortunately, are the last resort. Hospitals are the places that you go. That, that keep you from the mortuary across the street. And for that, they are fantastic. And Canada has some of the best. But this is emergency medicine. We need institutions of healing. Uh, for example, with congestive heart failure, uh, you know, there should be places I could go to in nature, eating the right food, because food is the central healer, as Hippocrates the founder of medicine said, let food be thy medicine. Above all, do no harm. These are the oaths that doctors used to take. Above all, do no harm when almost any drug that's out there can kill you. Now listen to the side effects. We don't have to live like that. And like I said, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because, uh, because it's personal uh, and because I want this truth to come out. We can have for example, Health Canada, we should have not just allopaths represented. Allopaths are the guys that give you the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, you know, the painkillers. Not, not just allopaths, but homeopaths, uh, naturopaths, uh, Chinese medicine, uh, uh, Indian, and so forth. That all the branches of medicine should be represented. This hospital doesn't even have a place to have a sponge. I'm lying in bed, as I am now for almost seven days, getting poked and prodded and blood taken and, and so forth. You know, one of the best things, and I, of course, have minimal circulation, would be standard massage or shiatsu. Uh, there are so many healing things, but you can't get access to the healing things because it's all specialized. Everybody specializes. So we no longer have the overall healing modalities that we need which are real um, so uh, so that's why I'm doing this and uh, and hopefully hopefully someone out there or a group of people will begin to understand that it's possible to 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 heal to, to change the system and we need to change it